Hello the internet and welcome back to my channel. Would you like to win this microscope? Then stay tuned and keep watching as I'm going to give this away for free to one of my viewers. Today I'm reviewing a microscope, but first I would like to apologize with all of you. Um, this is the second review I'm doing here on my channel in just a few weeks time. And this is not really what I'd like to do here on my channel. Let me explain you what happened. A few months ago, I published a Socket 7 repair video of a motherboard. That video went incredibly well. I gained a lot of new subscribers and I had quite a few views for which I'm very grateful. At the same time, I, be, I was contacted by a couple of companies, Kaiwitz for a multimeter review and Joya Lens for a microscope review, offering their products for a review. Now that was the first time for me, so you can imagine I was quite excited about that. I gave it a thought and then I decided to accept their offers. I didn't realize that reviewing those products would take me quite a lot of time and that would be time that I would have liked to spend on other projects. So let's call this lesson learned for the future. I think I would be a bit more careful in the future if I uh, ever got approached by some companies to review their products. However, I promised I would review these items before the end of the year, and here I am. Uh, this is the last review that I have in the pipeline, and then I promise we'll go back to boards and repairs and much more cool stuff. That being said, I have a microscope today to review. Uh, this was sent to me by Joya Lens, which is a sub-brand of Andon Star. I've been sent these for free, but as last time, I have agreed with the manufacturer that my review is going to be 100% honest and 100% unbiased. Now, let's begin with, do you need a microscope? As some of you may already know, I have a microscope myself. I purchased that a few months ago and I had been thinking of buying the microscope for a long time. I procrastinated quite a lot on that because I thought I would not really use it. I thought it would just be a waste of money. I can tell you after a few months of having this microscope sitting on my desk that it's now become a very important tool in my lab here. It's as important as the multimeter, as my oscilloscope, as my hot air station. Now, everybody's different, of course. I'm not here saying that you should buy a microscope, but just to say that I didn't think I would use it so often, but I have to say that I'm really using it on each one of my projects. So here we are with the microscope. This is a Joya lens and the model number is JL249S-M. This is how it arrived. There's a little instruction manual in, um, I would say, reasonably good English, which is good. And here is the microscope. Let me show off a bit as usual. So let's unbox this thing. Now, one interesting feature of this microscope is, if I understand correctly, it comes with interchangeable lenses, which has always been one of the reasons why I decided not to go with the Andon Star in the first place, because of the fixed magnification. Now I've seen videos of people installing the Andon Star, you know, like up in the air, like a meter away, and it does work the way you want it. It gives you like that 10, 15, 20, whatever, 30 centimeters of working area. It just felt like a massive workaround and I, that's why I ended up with something different. Let me put this together and I'd rather move to the point and just see how it works, the picture quality, how it compares with my Lapsun one. Well, I'm assembling the base and I feel I've met a little uh, snag here because that's the adapter that is supposed to slide in this thing, in the, in the column. It just doesn't fit. Um, just, yeah, it honestly doesn't fit. It basically stops here. It looks like the column is slightly incorrectly machined. So it's a bit wider here than here. So that's not a good start, is it? Because you wouldn't expect, I mean, this thing is not cheap. This face is poorly machined. Now this is supposed to slide inside this and it doesn't. And obviously, yeah, the, the screw is in. I can remove the screw, it, it doesn't matter. I will get back in touch with Andon Star and say, hey, I got this problem. You need to fix it and send me a, a working microscope. And then we'll pick it up from there. But this is not a good start. Honestly, uh, I can't think of recommending something that arrives like that, uh, that can arrive like that. 
Okay, I've got in touch with the manufacturer and they sent me a replacement metal work. So let's have a look on this one and see whether this time it seems to be working. So this one seems to be slide correctly. There's a little bit of play, but that's totally expectable. This one is okay as well. So uh, finally, uh, <laughs> let's try again and assemble this microscope. Okay, let's begin with a note on uh, the stand. So the new metal work works. However, I now have this problem, which is basically the whole microscope can tilt a bit, can rotate a bit. And usually when you start using it, you always end up tilted like this. And I don't feel that there's an issue with the metal work again. Let me show you what I mean. The way that this pipe is attached to these um, piece of metal here, is through this little screw here at the back. The problem is the screw is actually applying pressure on a round surface here. Now I think on my Lapsun there's a similar setup but the screw is applying section on the flat area so when you apply pressure on a, when you basically put a screw on a flat surface like this you are locking the, the piece of metal in place as it won't be able to rotate. So the problem with this design that I can see is that these parts, they need to have some mechanical play because this pipe has to slide through this connector here, let's call it that way. It doesn't matter how tight the screw is, the mechanical plays will always be there and the screw is not able to stop the play from happening. So unfortunately, as you hopefully can see here, this whole thing is able to rotate in its own clamp. And I feel that this is just a design flow. So I don't really feel there is a solution for this mechanical problem, which is kind of inconvenient. Again, imagine you buy this thing and you're constantly using it and it's, it's at an angle. It does work. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it doesn't feel like the greatest design. Now, let's start with saying that during this review, I'm going to compare the Joya lens to the Lapsun microscope that you see there. Reason is I have double checked with Lapsun and this microscope, as you see there, with that stand as it is, which is a bit particular if you watch my review video, which I will link here and down below in the description, is about 150 pounds and I think that's shipped. While this Joya Lens microscope currently retails for around 300 pounds on Amazon directly from the manufacturer. Now, as far as I understand, the Lapsun can be purchased with a similar stand than the Joya Lens, probably gonna be around 200 pounds. So again, I feel these are comparable. Actually, again, that one is gonna be cheaper, but obviously the Lapsun doesn't come with a monitor. Now, clearly these two microscopes are aimed at different type of users. So this is a compact unit that you just uh, put away on a shelf when you've done. This one is something that needs to be connected to a monitor. It might work with, for someone. Someone might prefer the standalone units that can be just put away on a shelf or even in a drawer maybe. That being said, let me start with some specification of this unit. This is a fixed zoom unit. It comes with three different lenses that you can replace. That's a plus compared to the original Andon Star, and we'll get to that in a minute. But when I'm saying fixed magnification, what I mean is the, the knob here on the, on the microscope body is for focusing the unit and not for adjusting the magnification. The magnification can be changed by adjusting the height of the whole microscope. Now, looking at the stand, I have to say I am quite disappointed by the stand and especially again compared to the Lapsun I have. We have some knobs here to basically adjust the height of the microscope. Number one, I don't understand the purpose of these adjustments because these would basically change the magnification by a very little bit. Because as you can see, we are talking about, what is that? six, seven centimeters of height difference. So this is, seems to be more for adjusting the focus of the unit, but I already have a focus adjustment here on the body of the microscope, so I'm not sure what this is for. In addition, these knobs are a bit stiff, uh, and obviously the, the knob itself is not very big. And if you're looking on the other side, this knob is more or less unusable because it's so close to this metal piece that every time I try to use it, I more or less hurt 
hurt my fingers. As you can see, this knob is not protruding enough to be able to be used efficiently, I'd like to say. Now, as I said, this microscope is of fixed magnification, and the only way to increase or decrease the magnification is to uh, raise or lower the whole microscope. Now, I've seen other products on the internet featuring rack companion mechanism here on the upright. So basically, by using a knob here, you can e very easily raise or lower the whole microscope in order to change the magnification. Now, unfortunately, on this unit, all you have to do is to loosen this screw. And then, again, you have to basically manually adjust this thing. As you can imagine, I mean, if you want to quickly zoom in and out from a board because you're looking at components and then you want to inspect a bit closer, but then you want to go back to uh, a more wide view. This is incredibly inconvenient that you have to lift and lower the stain all the time. And again, obviously the adjustment is not very precise as you can imagine. So to be honest, I'm not impressed by the stand. It honestly feels like a toy, especially if I compare it to my Lapsen one. Again, this is not a lapse in review, but you can compare the, the size, the smoothness of the components here. The, the knob is pretty big, so it's a pleasure to use, to be honest. And again, the main difference between this microscope and the Joya lens is that this microscope is not a fixed magnification. So this adjustment here is actually to change the magnification of the lens itself. So you can zoom in and out and, and do an inspection on a component and then go back to a wider view by just turning this one. At the back of the unit, we have an SD card slot. Despite the manual says that it doesn't come with an SD card, mine came with, a, I think it's a 32 gigabyte SD card. We have three LEDs, which I don't think they're documented, but they look like they are basically showing what the SD card is doing. Then we have a micro USB for powering the unit and also for connecting to a computer. And finally, we have, a, I think it's called a mini HDMI, which is kind of inconvenient because it does come with a 1.5 meter mini HDMI to standard HDMI. But that means that if you want something longer than that, you'll have to buy your own cable. And here on the right hand side, that's the reset button. The base is not too heavy, but the whole microscope is pretty stable, to be honest. There is a power connector here on the base for these LED lights. There is also a control unit here where you can turn the lights up and down in terms of brightness. You also have an on-off button, which is not only turning off the lights, but it's also turning off the microscope because the same cable has a micro USB plug for the microscope itself. Now, the only downside, downside of using this uh, very nice multifunctional cable is that if you plug the other end, which is a USB-A type, to a computer, the computer doesn't see the microscope. So this is only for power. If you want to connect the microscope to a computer for data, you'll have to use a different separate cable, which is by the way supplied with the microscope itself. The usable area of the base is 18 centimeter by 16 centimeters here. And obviously the size of the base and the fact that the microscope is attached to the base itself has a limitation in terms of the maximum distance of the component that you want to inspect on a board. So in a board like this, which is pretty small, you can turn it around and that's not a big deal. But obviously, if you want to inspect something bigger, like for example, this PlayStation 3 board, you probably won't be able to inspect the components in the middle as the, the maximum distance that you can inspect here, it's about 10 centimeters. So if your board is more than 20 centimeters, and this happens to be a 23 and a half centimeters, obviously you will have kind of a blind area here in the middle where you won't be able to inspect anything. To be honest, this is one of the reasons why I decided not to go with the Andon Star when I was evaluating a microscope, and also the reason why I ended up with that uh, weird uh, desk mounted stand for my Lapsun. Because, you know, I might need to inspect in this case like a PlayStation 3 board, or my board could be mounted into some kind of equipment and I have to take it out because the microscope can only reach under the space and can only do 10 centimeters. It really depends what you have to do, what kind of equipment you're dealing with. But I feel this is kind of a limitation, not of this very microscope, but this type of microscopes. The screen looks like to be of good quality. It looks like it has pretty wide viewing angles and the quality is pretty good to be honest, I like this. 
In terms of video delay, the Joya lens is very usable, showing only 10 milliseconds delay on the integrated display. I measured a delay of 15 milliseconds through the HDMI output, but that includes the input lag of my Dell monitor, which is not the fastest. As a reference, my Lapsun measures the same milliseconds delay on the very same monitor. Now I don't want to go through the manual, the option, because uh, most of them are pretty self-explained. However, just a couple of mentions here. The, there is a resolution option here, which goes from HD 30 Hertz to Ultra HD. This is the size of the recording on the SD card. It's not the output or anything, it's only the recordings on the SD card. And here on this second menu, we have a Wi-Fi option, which you might think is to connect to a Wi-Fi, and actually is the other way around. The Andon Star will create a Wi-Fi so you can access the Wi-Fi and connect to it. It comes with a software, which to be honest, I haven't looked at because I rather use OBS rather than uh, pro proprietary software. But when it says Wi-Fi here is not to connect to your home Wi-Fi, it will just create its own Wi-Fi and you connect to it. Now I feel the next step would be to connect this microscope to my laptop and use OBS to record this output. I feel you can see many more details and you can actually see the quality of the camera, the recording, rather than me shooting on a screen. So let's plug this thing into my laptop. Let's uh, fire up OBS and then I'll show you full screen how this looks and we can continue with this review. Now, once you connect the Joya lens to a computer, it will ask you whether you want to use it as a mass storage, which means basically it will become as a USB stick and you can access the SD card on the Joya lens, which is pretty useful, to be honest. But you won't be able to see any picture, you won't be able to use the microscope at all. Or you can select PC camera and that way you can not only use the supply software, but you can also use OBS and it will become a remote uh, microscope, a USB microscope. Now, unfortunately, the moment you select PC camera, the screen will turn like this, it says PC camera, and what you see here is actually not real time. So you cannot see the picture on the screen and on the computer at the same time. And the same applies to the external HDMI uh, monitor. You can't see the picture on this little screen and on the external monitor at the same time. And this is something the Lapsun is doing better as you can use the external monitor and the USB computer at the same time. This adjustment here is the focus, as you can see. And unfortunately, it does come with quite a lot of play. Let me see if I can show you what I mean. Now I'm adjusting the focus. If I'm going the other direction, nothing happens. Uh, that I think this is mechanical play, what you see here. Because it only starts now. And now I'm making it perfect. I'm going the other direction, as you can see from the knob I'm turning, nothing happens up to here, and then it starts changing it. So that's not great. That's not what you would expect from a precision microscope, that you have you know, several degrees of mechanical play on the focus adjustment. It's doable, but I'm sure you agree with me that's not great. Now, the other thing I'd like to mention, as you might have noticed already, is that every time you touch this thing, the whole picture wobbles quite a lot. Like if I'm adjusting, you see I'm adjusting the focus now. I mean, it's doable, it's watchable, but it does you know, wobble quite a lot, which is something that my Lapsun doesn't have. I can show you now I'm here adjusting the Lapsun focus. You can see the picture is rock steady. It's both because of the, the way the lens is manufactured, but also because the stand is is massive compared to this one. So again, unfortunately, that picture is not very stable and every time you touch anything on this little screen, you end up with this waving, which is not great. Another inaccuracy of the focusing system is that whenever you change direction on the ring, the picture slightly shifts left or right. Here, I'm just barely focusing by moving the adjustment in both directions and you can see the picture is shifting. Right now, I'm not moving the board or the microscope. What you see is the effect of operating the focus ring. The Joya lens comes with three different lenses. We've got Type D, Type A and Type L. And the difference is the magnification, obviously, and the distance between the lens itself and the working piece. Lens Type D is a, is a lens with a massive magnification of up to 2040x 
on uh, with digital zoom by the way so i don't know what's the actual optical one and this is working at four or five millimeters from the working piece so that's not relevant to what we do on this channel so i'm not going to use this one today now these are the two lenses which are relevant to soldering and board inspections and electronics in general they have different ranges and different distances but they overlap with each other. So they're actually both relevant to what we need to do. Let me show what that means. To install one of these lenses, you have to basically hold the lens in place, and then you have to tighten two of these, let's call them grab screws, which will inevitably fall on your desk, slash on your floor every, every time you're trying to do that, especially in front of a camera. It is obviously an easy task to do, but you'll understand in a minute why this is kind of inconvenient. Now the microscope is now set with the lens A, which is an 18720 magnification. Again, the, the manual says with three times digital zoom, so I'm assuming the optical one is less than that. I'm currently at the highest height that the microscope microscope can go, and as you can see on the screen, you can end you end up with a massive eight centimeter of working area, which is definitely more than you need for a, for a wider overview of a PCB. I consider 35 millimeter like the what you're looking for when you're looking for something just for a wider overview. Eight centimeters or 80 millimeters is definitely more than you need. Now, when looking at this lens at the widest setting, which is right now, I have noticed kind of an uneven focus between left and right. So I'm either focusing the left or the right with something happening in the middle, by the way. Maybe not the end of the world, but it's still not something you would expect from a precision microscope. At the maximum magnification, the A-type lens can go down to a very impressive two and a half, three millimeters. But as you can see, this is only happening at around 15 millimeters from the working piece, which makes any use for electronic soldering, repair or inspection pretty much pointless. As you can see, the magnification is impressive, but honestly, more or less pointless. I wouldn't be able to uh, get in with the soldering iron. I'm struggling myself just to stick my hand in and just refocus on the components. And obviously at this type of magnification with this type of stand, the picture is very wobbly when you're trying to refocus and, and just use this microscope. This is where the L-type lens comes into play. Let me show you how this can help. If I now swap the A-type lens with the L-type lens, What I achieve with this lens is a 2.1 centimeter or 21 millimeters working area, which again, I feel it's not enough for like a general inspection of a board, but this lens has an advantage. And the advantage is that this lens can go down to around 6.5 millimeters at 95 millimeter height, which is very good for soldering. I would consider around 10 centimeters as the minimum distance from the working piece so that you can actually work with a soldering iron or even a hot air station or tweezers or whatever you need. While these two lenses are giving you all the options that you might need for all your needs, I find the combination a bit inconvenient because this lens will give you the maximum range uh, between 79 millimeters and three millimeters, but three millimeters is more or less unusable because it's too close to the piece. So then you're gonna use this one, which is the type L lens, which is giving you the height that you need for an inspection, for a closer inspection. I have a very good magnification, but it won't go any further than 22 millimeters, which in my opinion is not enough for a good overall inspection. And I have to say that not only do you have to move the microscope up and down and refocus every time you want to zoom in and out, which to me is inconvenient per se, but also you need to replace the lenses in between different tasks to achieve different magnifications. As much as it's a good thing that it gives you this option, I find this pretty time consuming and inconvenient. Now, if you really want to get creative and think of a way to attach the microscope onto something else, to basically move the microscope away from the working piece and have a wider working area, uh, just bear in mind that I have measured the maximum distance that you can actually focus this microscope with this lens actually, which ends up to be 60 centimeters from the lens, at that point, you end up with 6.5 centimeter of working area. 
Now, if you've been thinking of doing this, as I've seen on oh, many users, many Andon Star users are using the microscope attached at the bottom of the lens rather than the, the base of the lens itself, uh, just bear in mind that the way this is designed, it becomes pretty unstable. I mean, you already have to play on the stand here, plus you have some play in there. Honestly, I wouldn't think of doing that. It's doable, but honestly, I don't think it's a good idea. Now I would like to show you a little test run to show you the difference in operations between these two microscopes. Now I have a perfect example. You might see this board at some point in one of my future videos. This is the minimum magnification of my Lapsum microscope. I'm inspecting these components and at some point I see something that catches my attention. I see what looks like a crack on, on this IC. All I need to do, I just need to zoom in. And there we go, yeah, there's a crack. Uh, there's definitely a fault with this component. Right, I need to order another one. Let's go back to the general inspection. There you go, a little focus adjustment. And I'm ready to continue. Oh, look at that. I think there's another component here that needs, maybe it's missing. Let's have a look. Again, a little focus adjustment. And yeah, absolutely, there's something here. This is how I'm using my Lapsum microscope. Let me show you now how I would do the same task on the Joya lens. The board is under the Joya lens and uh, I'm using the L lens, which is the one that doesn't require me to go down to the, to the board, but it doesn't have the same wide working view, which both the A lens and the Lapsum has. So what you see right now on the screen, it's only 22 millimeters, which is not great. But anyways, you know, this is what this lens can do. And if I wanted to see a bit more, I would need to swap the lens with the A type. So I'm uh, here checking my components. I end up this chip that looks a bit suspicious. Now you might notice the touch in the focus will make the picture a bit wobbly because obviously the microscope is pretty high and the, the stand is not as stable as the, the one I'm using on the Lapsun. I see what looks like a crack. Now I want to zoom in a bit. What I need to do, I need to move this down, turn the focus ring quite a lot. Okay, I lowered that too much, so I need to go up a bit. There we go, and oh yeah, there's a crack on the chip. So now we've inspected this component here, yeah, I need another one, I'll need to place an order. I'd like to return back to a wider view to be able to do a wider inspection, so I'll have to lift the microscope up, refocus, and again, it's quite a few turns of adjustment. There we go. Again, I know this, oh, that also looks like as a missing component. So there we go. I'll have to zoom in, or actually lower the microscope, refocus. Oh yeah, that's a missing component, so I will have to find out, blah, blah, blah. As much as this is definitely working and, and the picture quality is not bad at all, I find this very inconvenient. I'm Maybe because I'm used to the ability of zooming in and out using the lens freeing and not having to do this up and down all the time, particularly because these two products are comparable from a price point of view, I really don't like this way of having to deal with the magnification of the microscope. I guess it would have probably been a bit better if the stand had a rack and pinion system. At that point, you might be able to just zoom in and out by turning a, a knob, possibly like a large knob, rather than having to deal with this like locking screw and, and having to move the whole thing manually. To be honest with you, what I think is going to happen if someone purchased this product, uh, they would probably end up using the same lens for everything and they would just live with the limitations of the lens itself. I have a feeling that the L-type lens is the most suitable for what we need to do, because again, the A-type will give you a wider working area, but the fact that it has to go so close to the board to actually have a higher magnification, I feel that between the two, I would probably always keep the L-type. But again, then you'll have to live with the fact that you can't zoom out more than 22 millimeters. So I guess for most of this review, I'm going to use the L-type lens. Just bear in mind, again, you do have an option to get a wider working area. It's just that you need to replace the lens. 
you might be tempted to think, why not using the A lens instead and basically think, right, I don't need three millimeters magnification or working area. So all I can do, I will just uh, use the A lens and just go down to 10 centimeters, which is, let's call it the acceptable distance for soldering and that kind of stuff. And just leave with the amount of magnification that this lens is giving me at 10 centimeters different distance from the board. Now, unfortunately, I have measured and at 10 centimeters from the board, the A type lens, it's only giving you 31 millimeter working area, which I don't think it's enough. I guess you can leave with a smaller working area rather than a bigger working area, because the bigger working area won't allow you to see the details that you're trying to look. And that's the reason why you're using a microscope, I guess. Now, looking at this lens, as you can see, the optics are actually pretty small. That's why you don't have an option for a Barlow lens. There's no thread here at the bottom and the whole casing here is in plastic. What you see right now is uh, an example of a random board I have under the Joya lens. In terms of picture quality, I have to say that if you're watching this on the small Joya lens screen, it looks totally fine. It's actually pretty vibrant. The colors are pretty vibrant. It's pretty sharp. But if you put this on a like full screen or on a big monitor like I have here in my in my shop, which is a 27 inches, you will see that the picture is very noisy. You can see here on the green and all around the picture. I think this is a sim symptom of a small sensor. Now, if I put the same board under the Lapsun, this is what you see. As you can see, the colors are pretty different. I guess it's just a different processing. I have to say that the Lapsin is actually more faithful to the actual color of the board. It doesn't really matter. We are not doing photography here. The picture looks a bit softer here, I have to say, and I have removed my Barlow lens because, you know, it's an extra lens that inevitably will degrade the picture a little bit. I have to say the Lapsin looks a bit softer, but at the same time, the picture is less, less noisy than the Joy lens. So all in all, to be honest I'm not particularly impressed by a very noisy picture even though again we are not doing like low light photography so uh, maybe it's not relevant I appreciate the fact that the Joya lens is a bit sharper than the Lapsin what you see here is the Joya lens at, at its maximum magnification. You can still see the, the noise on the, on the sensor. I mean, the picture becomes very unstable if I try and tap on my desk. I mean, it's definitely usable, but it's definitely not what I'm expecting. And I'm not touching the microscope because if I try and focus this thing, which is pretty difficult to do because of the play, mechanical play that I mentioned before, I have to say it is, it's complicated because you can see I'm focusing now as you can see and the whole picture shakes which doesn't help if I'm trying to get the, the best focus that I can. Now let's quickly talk about the advantages and disadvantages of this type of lighting. As you can see on the picture, this type of lighting is likely to cause shadows. So for example, here I've got my, some capacitors, basically casting a shadow on some SMD components. And if I'm looking here, the legs of my larger chips are covered by the shadow cast by the chip itself. To overcome this problem, I will have to realign my lights for a better view. With the ring light, you have a duller type of picture, but uh, it's uh, more uniformly lit and you don't have shadows. And if I'm going to inspect my larger chip here, again, you don't need to adjust any lighting whatsoever, whether you're watching on the right hand side or the bottom side, any part of the PCB is uniformly lit and you don't have to adjust anything. However, this type of lighting is giving a general better picture and just, just because the light is not coming from the top. So for example, if you have some liquids on the board, you don't see the reflection of the liquid itself. And some details are actually more evident with this type of lighting rather than with the ring light. Let me show you what I mean. Now, this is a crack component. You can clearly see there's a horizontal crack as well as a vertical crack on the right hand side of the chip. Now, this is the very same chip under the Lapsum microscope, which features a ring light. And you can clearly see that the crack is not as evident, especially the vertical crack. It's kind of blends into the chip itself. It is not as evident as before. So some details are definitely more obvious with some light shining from the sides of the component. Now, let me show you an advantage of the bigger stand 
as I have with the Lapsun. Let's imagine I'm working on this unit and I want to inspect this component here. All I need to do, I need to raise the microscope a bit, extend the microscope to where I want to go, refocus a bit, and here I am, I'm ready to work straight on my board. I don't have to do anything. When I'm done, all I, can, all I need to do, I basically need to push this away and, and it's done. Now, unfortunately, this can be done with this type of microscope. Again, there's nothing wrong with the Joya lens to be <laughs> fair with this brand. Any type of microscope that comes with a small stand, a small base and a fixed arm, obviously you need to slide the board under the microscope. You can't do this kind of inspections. So what do I think of the Joya lens? Well, I think we have a problem. This is a 300 pounds unit, and I feel it's massively outperformed by the Lapsun, which can be had with around, let's say 220 pounds shipped with a similar stand. The main issue I have with this type of microscopes, not necessarily the Joya lens, is the fixed magnification. When I'm inspecting boards and working on boards, I'm constantly zooming in and out, looking for cracks, looking for issues, with the Lapsun or that kind of microscopes, I can do that in a Zwift. With this type of microscopes, I have to change the height of the whole unit and then refocus. And that takes quite a lot of time. On top of that, I'm sorry, but this stand is a toy. It's inaccurate, it wobbles a lot, and also it doesn't have the rack and pinion system on the upright, which makes changing magnification very time consuming. The Lapsun or any microscopes based on C-mount lens have basically infinite combinations of optics which you can get depending on what you're doing with this microscope. Picture-wise, the Joya lens is not bad, but I can see that the picture is much noisier than the Lapsun and it feels like it's been digitally enhanced, probably a little bit too much. I guess that's a consequence of having a smaller sensor inside, I feel. Yes, the Joya lens is a compact product. It comes with a monitor. I appreciate not everybody wants a massive stand permanently clamped on the desk, but the Lapsun can also be ordered with a similar type of stand. And still, the price of the whole unit is lower than the Joya lens. Sure, you will need the monitor with that kind of microscope, while the Joya lens, it's an all-in-one compact product. In the end, I feel the Joya lens it's not the best quality and it's overpriced. So thank you Joyalens slash Understar for sending me this unit, but I did promise you a honest review and I'm afraid I cannot recommend this unit. Now, I see that this microscope is also available in different fashions, in different flavors. This is a 10 inches screen. There's also a seven inches available with or without HDMI output. The seven inches without HDMI output, it's only 150 pounds. So maybe that's a more appealing product. Still, I'm not impressed by this unit. And if the seven inches is, has the same manufacturing quality, I would say that probably I wouldn't be impressed even though it's only 150 pounds. Now let's come to the part that many of you have been waiting for. I don't need this microscope. Um, even if it had been the greatest microscope on earth, I still don't like this type of microscopes. Nothing wrong with Joya lens. I really like my Lapsun and stand I've come up with. So I've decided to give this microscope to one of my viewers for free. Now I've been thinking of using some giveaways websites where you register and you uh, you put your name on it and at the end we just uh, select a winner. But most of those websites are either not free or they ask for your personal details, which feels a bit unfair to me. So after much ruminating on this problem, I've decided that you'll have to trust me. <laughs> to join the raffle, just uh, hit the like button and leave a comment down below. I will collect all the usernames on the 1st of March 2023 and then I'll make a public video where I will select the winner. The winner will get the microscope for free. I'm based in the UK, so if you are based in the UK, you will get the microscope for free, including shipment. If you live outside of the UK, I will have to ask you to take care of the shipping and also any custom fees that may happen. And I hope you understand that. This is it. 
I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like button down below also for other reasons. And also please consider subscribing to my channel if you like what I'm doing here. As usual, I wish you a great day, a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and I hope to see you again soon here on my channel. Bye-bye.